Last but not least, we are pleased to announce Kayo Avancini, Advanced Chassis Engineer at Hitachi Astemo, and Matthias Bruns, Deputy Team Lead Suppression Engineer, EU, at Hitachi Astemo. During their presentation, Kayo and Matthias will show how artificial intelligence can be used to optimize the performance of shock absorbers, accurately predict their behavior, and set the ideal tuning settings for electric vehicles using VI-grade technology. Good afternoon, Italy. Good afternoon, 2023 Zero Prototype Summit. How are you guys doing today? Having a great time so far? Yeah, raise your hands if you had a good time here. Huh? <laughs> There we go, yeah, full crowd here. Nice, nice. Okay, let's get started then. Uh, my name is Kyle Avanzini. Uh, I am an uh, advanced chassis engineer for Hitachi Astemo, and I'm here today with... Matthias Bruns, and I'm responsible for the Europe design of shock absorbers at Hitachi. Great, great. Welcome. And, uh, uh, yeah, welcome. <laughs> uh, today we'll present a little bit uh, um, on what we do. First, we're going to show you guys a little bit of the challenges that we have facing the electrification that uh, it's going on right now in the market uh, worldwide, uh, as well as uh, give some uh, at a glance, right, uh, Matthias, a little bit on what we do with virtual tuning, integrating Hitachi Astemo technology and also VI grades technology using software in the loop and also driver in the loop. Uh, and at the end, we will show something new, right? Uh, uh, bottled by artificial intelligence. I hope you guys enjoy it and let's get started. So first presentation here, I'd like to present uh, who we are a little bit uh, so you guys can understand what is Hitachi Astemo and uh, what is our background. So Hitachi Astemo was born back in 2021 after the merge of four different companies, Hitachi Automotive System, uh, Nissin, Keihin, and Showa. And together we are one Hitachi. Together we are Hitachi Astemo. And uh, for those who don't know, like, what is the meaning of Astemo? So Astemo stands for Advanced Sustainable Technologies for Mobility. And uh, we do a quite variety of things, right, Matthias? So there's a lot of things. We do a lot. Maybe uh, most of them, most of us, most of you <laughs> know us more for excavators <laughs> yeah. and uh, machines. Uh, drilling machines, uh, tools, and so yeah, on. Yeah. But actually, we supply also to automotive. Uh, and this is our portfolio, what uh, Hitachi apply to automotive uh, business. So I'm starting with internal combustion engine. We have uh, pistons, high pressure pumps, oil pumps, uh, and, but also electric parts like e-motors, e-axles, inverters, IGBTs, ADADOS systems, uh, um, stereo cameras, ECUs, position unit, but also a steering, uh, like steer-by-wire system, which we currently develop, uh, or power steering, and also by our former CBI colleagues, uh, our brake products, smart brakes, uh, parking drums, e-actuators. But today we are going to talk only about suspension. <laughs> yeah, let's focus uh, on one. <laughs> We've uh, got a long time here. So uh, what we see is we need to uh, heavily reduce our envir environmental impact, uh, especially CO2, energy consumption, and uh, also sustainable material selection, uh, and all that uh, in the changing environment of uh, moving to autonomous driving and robotaxis future. Yeah? And uh, all that together with a shortened application timing. So to see that, uh, how is that influ influencing our damper design? Yeah? Especially if we're talking about battery electric vehicles, it's increasing the vehicle weight and also creating new chassis platforms. Uh, and then also damper design is changed. Mm -hmm. a additional to that, we see a ban of classic materials like Chrome 6 restriction and PFAS restriction, uh, where we have to select new materials maybe or at least investigate. And then we see a lot of focus on driving comfort recently, more than on handling on safety, what we was focusing on the past years. And all that together uh, require a new need of new technologies for us and uh, with a gather of fast implementation. So to sum up, we have a lot of design changes, higher loads, comfort increase, noise reduction requirements, and reduce of energy consumption. And uh, for that, Hitachi developed uh, hydraulic end stops, uh, hydraulic rebound stops, hydraulic compression stops, frequency reactive dampers. We have two technologies here addressing different uh, frequencies. 
uh, and a new uh, valve technology, we call it HFLS for low speed control to uh, better control the heavy vehicles and uh, performance increase of our semi-active dampers. Very short pictures, <laughs> yeah. not allowed to go too That's deep. Like the idea what we're talking about, right? So, <laughs> so uh, in total, Hitachi Astemo on suspension side can pick from a wide range of suspension design products uh, to address this massive ongoing changes. Uh, but with our conventional approach, building on a very early mule vehicle, some crazy prototypes uh, with all the, our technologies taking long time, and uh, finally, we decide for tuning on a crazy mule vehicle, and later on, they find out the next vehicle is mm -hmm. totally different. So there's vast opportunity exactly. to go so to we need virtual. to go faster as well, right? So this yeah. is helping us. So now it's time to put together uh, Hitachi STEMO technologies and VI grade, right? Uh, I would like to give you guys first an overview on how we are doing things at Hitachi when it's, it's about uh, spiritual simulation and how we are visualizing this process, okay? And that, that's one thing that we are currently doing right now. So just to give an idea, uh, we received the request for quotation from our customers and the study request. We run our virtual model evaluation in the using car real time, the software in the loop. Uh, at the same time, we also design the shock absorbers itself, all the structure of the, the damper, and uh, give that uh, as uh, one result of the, the design process that we do. We do the iterative valve code damping force target analysis using the softwares and also Simulink to support our damper models, uh, all built with hydraulic models, including all of the technologies that we have. And we simulate Hitachi STEMO technologies in that uh, uh, environment, and we are able to use as an add-on, so we don't only test what it's available, uh, that what the customer is looking for, but actually test what we have available in our library. So we put everything together, we do a study, and we deliver to the customer not only what they're asking for, but as actually, actually suggestions on what we can work together and be better at delivering the best performance possible. So uh, here's one example. We did some study with a pickup truck here. Um, it, the blue line is the actual virtual testing and the red one is real life data uh, acquisition for, uh, from objective evaluation. And as you can see, the data correlates uh, pretty well using the virtual tuning process. So um, uh, here we have lateral acceleration, speed, uh, yaw rate, and the side, side slip, uh, and it's correlating pretty well and we are very confident, right, Matthias, that we can use that uh, and going onwards with the development of new uh, projects. Uh, and this is focused on only passive, but also uh, the semi-active tempers that we have available. So, Matthias, what are we going to talk about now? We're talking about chat GPT. <laughs> We're not talking about ChatGPT. <laughs> We're going to talk about artificial intelligence, guys, for dampers. Yes, a STEMO is able to produce uh, damper models using artificial intelligence and predict uh, damping force values based on that. So that's something that is, I would say, uh, brand new. Uh, we are very proud of this technology uh, within our global team, uh, and uh, we achieved some great results and correlations so far. So I would like to explain a little bit on how we are doing this, actually, and this is something uh, quite interesting. So we characterize our dampers and other technologies that we have right now, uh, all of them hydraulic uh, models in Simulink, and uh, we characterize that in all the frequency ranges that we can possibly do using Simscape. Uh, we define that uh, damper model in the, using a neural network uh, modulation we using uh, programming code and also characterizing the damper and placing that into 10 arrays divided in three different layers of neural networks. Um, and at the end, we have as a result our damper models in Simscape that can easily uh, predict the damping force values based on that learning process that we added to the uh, study in those neural network layers. Okay, uh, this is uh, something uh, quite, uh, quite interesting because uh, it's not only about uh, having that uh, model set up in a uh, not very conventional way, as on only using Simulink and hydraulic models, but actually uh, predicting damping force that is very effective for our virtual interactive process of the virtual tuning itself. So, should we ask them, Matthias? Let's ask them. Let's ask okay, them. so for the hydraulic models, we have a high complexity uh, design behind it, those subsystems. And uh, takes quite a long time, right, to simulate, depending on the complexity, especially frequency it, reactive dampers. So we are going. <laughs> so you guys want to guess how long it takes for the regular damper models? James, you're not allowed to say because you already know the answer. <laughs> so anyone want to guess how long it takes? Say a number by time, like hours or seconds or. 
How much? 15 hours? We heard 15 it's, hours. It's so quite okay. So it yeah. took out eight hours, eight hours. Uh, yeah. with the hydraulic model. Yeah, uh, but very complex, right? So yeah. looking at technology. So with artificial intelligence, that's that then guess again. So how long do you guys think it will take using the artificial intelligence model with then deep learning study? I heard some numbers there. Uh -huh. Here? Two hours? Hours, okay, let's use hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, how long it takes? It takes only 30 seconds now. 30 seconds yeah. to uh, be able, even a full car setup, right? I'm talking about all the corners here. So it's very fast and effective, considering that we have this time limit that uh, using the simulator and having that moment, uh, trying to tune that virtually, we need to improve this process of getting the, the data quick, processing them quickly, and delivering with precision at the end of the day using the driver in the loop setup. So uh, here's just some example of some studies that we did for electric vehicles, considering all the challenges that we have for electric vehicles. So we add that to the model as well. So uh, here's one uh, study that we did, for example, using the HCS technology at real time that Matthias explained a few slides before. So this is a hydraulic compression stop. Uh, we are reducing here the body acceleration, chassis acceleration of uh, electric pickup truck. Uh, and you can see that uh, using the models, we can actually reduce that uh, acceleration drastically just by tuning the HCS and Johnson bumper all together and also predicting those the values of tapping force and receiving the best results. And here's one 3D curve that is added directly to the car real time. So it's uh, quite a new uh, process to us and uh, we are very happy with the results so far. So moving on to the next slide here. Uh, this also uh, improves the process for the driver in the loop setup that we have as well. So right now we have in the US uh, office uh, in Michigan, uh, at HHS demo, uh, uh, compact simulator, and we also add our technologies in there as well, uh, using artificial intelligence and regular hydraulic uh, damper models in Simulink, and uh, we are very happy with the speed results that we have as well, and uh, how easy it is to interact in between the, 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 the tuning and the, the driver, and then getting the feedback right away. So this is something that I would say is we are quite happy, and <laughs> it's given us some, some good performance results so far, and uh, I, I would say Going onwards, but we're yes. looking for the FFS. <laughs> yes, we're looking for the FFSS, FSS, and uh, most likely we can work together with the VR Create team and uh, probably make some good improvements there as well for the tuning. In a small setup, at least I can have a good feeling and uh, actually test the new subjective evaluation using those temper models. Okay. So, uh, yep, that's uh, pretty much close uh, the, the, the presentation that we have. And I would like to just wrap up with that by saying that uh, at Hitachi Astemo, we are not only looking for dampers, but as you saw in the first three slides, we have a huge variety of products that we can actually include that as a hardware in the loop or software in the loop and uh, make them communicate uh, using artificial intelligence integrate that since we have a lot of uh, components we can probably integrate all of them using that system and uh, be able to do the full assessment of the cars plus our passive and semi-active dampers that it's ongoing and pretty much on demand and this will put of course Hitachi Astemo to the next level bring us to the future and the future is happening now so guys that's all that we have for today uh, thank you very much I hope you guys appreciate it a little bit of what Hitachi Astemo is doing thank you yeah, thank you and